Hi, welcome back. Uh, we're going to continue on in our lesson on row restriction here. And uh, in, in this lesson, we're going to kind of forge ahead and I'm going to cover how to do row restriction against different data types. So up till now, we've pretty much just covered how to do row restriction against a numeric integer data type. And we're going to expand that out. How do you do row restriction? What's the syntax for doing it against character fields, date and time, etc. I also want to mention that uh, if you haven't figured out by now, as I'm going through, if I'm going a little too fast for you and you need to catch up, hit the pause button on the video and get to a point where you're with me as far as this goes. Since we've been working together for a while now with the workbench, I'll probably be doing a little less hand-holding and not giving you quite as much time in areas that involve functions with the workbench that I feel that you're already familiar with at this point in time. All right, so for starting out here, we're going to be working with the healthcare database. So why don't you open that up? And specifically, we're going to be working with the healthcare provider table. So down here, and just start off again by creating a query where we bring back the first thousand rows and get your schema set up where you can see it. And let's use the beautifier. And so what we're going to do is we're going to grab first name and last name from that table. And we're going to add some row restriction. And in this case, where the type code is equal to P. And so let's run that. We get our results set back. And let's discuss that, what we've just done here. OK, if you notice, uh, the type code field is a character field, one character long. And as I'm doing row restriction on that, if you'll notice, I have it uh, my row restriction enclosed within single parentheses. Now, it's acceptable in MySQL to also use double parentheses. You certainly can do that, and it works just fine. However, I would encourage you to use single parentheses. And the reason why is, in your career, you may already be doing this, you may be wor working with uh, more than one version of SQL, like SQL Server, Oracle, DB2, what have you. And uh, a lot of other SQL servers will restrict you to using single parentheses. So that's really my rationale for doing that. But if you space out and forget, that's fine. But again, I'd encourage you to use single parentheses. Next, I, I want to talk about, you may be saying, OK, so you just had me write a row restriction statement where type code is equal to P, but how would I possibly know what the row restriction would be in this example other than you told me? And that certainly is a fair question, and one I'd probably throw back at, at you in terms of, uh, I, I've talked about this in previous lessons, if you're, if you're not sure of the, the data that you're working with, what can you do? For example, it's a type code field. What's something that we could do to figure out what are the applicable type codes in here? And uh, if you said, well, we could come along and we could do a select distinct. I hope you remember this from a previous lesson.
So we can say select distinct type code from healthcare provider and that'll give us a list of all of the different type codes. Now you might be asking what are these type codes? What do they mean? Well that's where sometimes the database itself isn't going to be of much help to you. That's where the people that create the database for whatever application it's being used for that they diligently document it either in the schema through the use of comment codes or in or user documentation to explain what that is. And while we could kind of go in and give you the semantics of this, for example, it, for this particular database, P stands for provider, U stands for user, R stands for resource, G stands for group, X stands for X-ray, on and on and on. So uh, how do I know that? Well, I know that through type, tribal knowledge of this particular database. And I guess the, the point that I want to share with you is is if your expectation is, is the database is going to provide you with all the information you need even upon doing analysis, that's just not the real world or that's not something that's going to be the case. So as you're working with data, you know, mining the data and looking at it is only going to take you so far and then you what you really need to do is you know in a lot of cases is go sneaker net off to whoever is knowledgeable on the database the, whether it's the people that created the database the analysts that work with it on a daily basis and that type of thing to, to get more information about you know how what these codes mean what certain data the propensity of it being used you know within an application that's that's reading and writing to it what have you Okay, so so that's uh, that's I guess some sage advice to kind of take with you. Okay, let's go back to our query. And another thing I want to talk about is, and I'm going to purposely put the field up here to show you something right now. So we're we're actually going to add on the type code field, even though we know it's only going to return back where it's equal to p. And you can see it's bringing back uppercase P. I'm going to go into my route restriction, and a lot of you that are programmers, a lot of you that have worked with other SQL servers, uh, when I do this, if I ask you what do you think is going to happen, you'd probably say, well, I'm going to get the rows back where the type code is equal to lowercase p. And actually, that's not the case with my SQL when you work with a lot of implementations of MySQL unless the person that's implementing MySQL by default sets uh, what's called the collation type uh, going after the data is actually case insensitive and uh, that's an important point now you're going to run across my and, and that's not typical for other types of SQL servers so for example the, the default for SQL server is to be case sensitive and it's the default for Oracle as well but with MySQL the default when you build a database is that the data is case insensitive by nature when you're querying against it so that's that's an important distinction to make and that's who who's ever implementing the database as far as you as far as you're concerned so so what's the take home message to you well the take home message that I have for you is that I think you should approach things as if they were case sensitive. And that's just that's just a good practice to get into. Now, uh you may be wondering, okay, let's suppose the data can be entered in the database both as upper and lower case, for example. And let's, uh, for sake of the argument, say that, well, the upper and the lowercase p, they mean the exact same thing. There's no difference other than the people that allow reading and writing to the database allow the data to be written in, into, the, into the tables, and it does, they don't care if it's uppercase or lowercase. And let's also presume that in our query that the people that created the database set it up so by default it wasn't case insensitive. In other words, it's case sensitive. How would we return all of the rows where it was e where the type code was equal to P? 
Well, there's a couple ways we could do it, but the easiest way for dealing with that is there's a function that we can apply. So in this case, we there's a, a function called upper. And what this function is going to do is it's going to take whatever this value is and it's going to create it in what's called the left operand over here. It's going to take this and it's going to upshift it. It's going to capitalize it. So for example, if in the database we truly did have type code and it was a lowercase p, well, in terms of this statement, we're going to take that lowercase p and we're going to turn it to uppercase. So that when we evaluate it, what essentially we've done by using this function is we've inherently made the where statement case insensitive by doing this. And we, we could do the same thing using a function called lower, where we could do the same thing. And as we run this, you, you see it's going to happen. But I want to reiterate again that because inherently SQL builds databases and I just went with the default so that it's case insensitive, we could do something totally nonsensical like this and we're going to get our data back. But where the collation was set to be case sensitive, this would not work. Okay, so so the take home again, just to kind of uh, review this, because that was a lot to throw at you, is that inherently SQL Server databases that get created are case insensitive, and if and my recommendation is that you still approach crafting your queries to where that's not the case, to where you're assuming worst case, that the data as you query against it is indeed case sensitive. And then the next thing is, is how do you make a query case insensitive through your where statement? You can apply an upper function and then whatever you have on the on what's called the right operand, you would put into uppercase that you're searching against. Okay? Next, I want to introduce you to the like operator in the in the where statement. So in this first example, when we covered row restriction, it was relatively simple. We had to plug in a single value, which is basically a type code. So that was easy enough to do. But let's look at our data set. Let's say, for example, I wanted to bring back a list of all of the patients whose last name began with B. Well, what's the best way of doing that? Well, in this case, the best way of doing that would be to use what's called the like operator. So I can say we're last name, and instead of the equal sign, I would say like, <coughs> excuse me, and then I would plug in the first character of the last name, and I would use the percentage sign, which is a wild card. And so how this statement reads is it says where last name, like, first letter, uppercase B, and again, we've already covered case sensitive, case insensitive, followed by any other character. And if we run this, we're going to get back all of the patients whose name begin with B. And you can see our list is in the order that it's included in the database. So the next thing that I want to show you is, well, what if we want to order it by last name? And you, you say, well, you, guys, you already showed us that in an earlier lesson. All I, want to do, all I need to do is really click on, and I'll get it ordered, ascending or descending. But let me now show you how in code where you would do that. What we can do, and let's just run this again so we get it back in the order, we can say, we can add another clause, clause called order by and the field that we want to order it by. Order by last name. 
Now if we run it, you'll see it's ordered by last name and it's in ascending order. So the default is ascending. We could explicitly say ASC. If we wanted to see it in descending order, we could say DESC for descending. And that'll give us the data back in our order by in descending order. Okay. Um, if you also notice, we've got uh, three butlers here. And you can see that maybe we also want last name, but we want a, a secondary sort, a secondary order by. We want to order by first name. And we want to make that ascending. Now watch what happens when I click. You'll see that chastity came to the top. And so that's how you do primary, secondary. You can do tertiary. Uh, I've seen queries that will have up to five sort levels on it, which frankly is, is, a tad, is a tad extreme. One other note about the wildcard. The wildcard can be used anywhere. It can be used multiple times within a string. So quickly, let's open up another query Let's open up patient account, get the first thousand, and let's see here. Actually, we're not going to pick that one. Let's pick department. We'll pick department. We'll grab the first thousand rows, and let's, uh, we're going to search anywhere where the word SERV is in the name. So we'll say select name from health department where name like serve and if we run this we get back wherever that happens to be. And we could do all sorts of things. We could search on pH and we should get a lot more hits back I would imagine on that particular string and in different locations. Yeah, you can see pharmacy over here, pharmacy at the beginning of the string, physical, the word physical where it's matching and on and on. Mammography. So, so you, I think you get the gist of this. Okay, I've now armed you with enough information where you can head off and uh, do your next hands-on lesson on your own. And I'll see you back after you're done. Later.